Thank you so much for joining us on CNBC TV 18. Firstly, uh, a big step forward as far as uh, the rail budget is concerned. You mentioned it's the highest allocation ever. But the fact is, on a YOY basis, maybe not so much. Uh, how, does, how, how would you react to that as the rail minister? See, railways used to get just about 35,000 crore rupees before to, in around uh, 2014. The budget allocation for investment in railways, especially in safety-related activities, has significantly increased after Prime Minister Modi ji took over in 2014. To, today's budget for railway, it is 2,62,200 crore rupees. Mm -hmm. This is huge. It's a record level. We, um, we, the entire railway system has never seen this kind of investment before. Mm -hmm. And the result is visible. In the last 10 years, 40,000 kilometers of railway tracks have been electrified. 31,000 kilometers of new railway tracks have been constructed. If you compare that with the 60 years, of the, uh, 60 years before 2014, only 20,000 kilometers of railway tracks were electrified in 60 years. Compared to that, 40,000 kilometers electrified in 10 years. Same is the case of uh, whether we are digitalizing these stations with electronic interlocking, having advanced signaling systems installed, having better safety systems in installed. Mm -hmm. Even in this budget, out of the 2,62,000 crore, about a lakh and 8,000 crore is on safety-related activities, which is track renewals, improving this uh, signaling system, installing coverage, making sure that the flyovers and underpasses are constructed so that people don't have to come onto the track. All those things are part of this budget, and it's a very, very significantly large allocation. And uh, we are very thankful to Honorable Prime Minister and Honorable Finance Minister for this. I also just want to get a thought, sir. One key uh, tax message that was sent out from the budget was that we saw a cut of equalization levy. We saw a cut in the angel tax. Uh, how would you respond to that? This was, uh, from many segments of the industry, a long-standing demand. Uh, see, angel tax was a matter which was, um, which was concerning the deep tech startups especially. Because when a deep tech startup wants to develop a new technology, mm -hmm. it's very difficult to make a valuation of the product that will come or the service that will come out. Mm -hmm. So it was a long pending demand and I'm thankful to Honorable Finance Minister that uh, the angel tax has been abolished. Mm -hmm. This will really help expand and widen the uh, startup ecosystem that we have. At a broader level, sir, just want to get a sense from you. We've seen a rejig as far as the income tax uh, brackets are concerned. Uh, from a broader perspective, from a government leadership perspective, what does that do uh, to consumption-linked spend that you see for the rest of this fiscal going forward? This definitely will help the consumption-led um, growth. The, the fundamental focus is on making sure that the middle-income families, uh, the pressure on them reduces, mm -hmm. the burden on them reduces. And that, if you look at the overall perspective, middle-income families are getting, uh, one, of course, tax relief, two, a very big dream of every middle-income family is to own a home. Yes. So this budget puts big emphasis on that. Third, when we live in smaller, bigger urban areas, the biggest requirement is of transportation. Mm -hmm. That has been addressed in this budget. And in the last 10 years, a lot of steps have been taken, for example, expanding the metro network to 18 cities. Mm -hmm. uh, those kind of things have happened in the last 10 years, and that's going to be expanded in this budget. Then the focus on making sure that the basic amenities like water supply, the grid connection, all those are addressed in this uh, initiative. CapEx is something, is a big cry that comes from the industry. Uh, we saw 11.11 in the interim budget. There was a hope that we may go something, we see, may see a figure north of that. We haven't, we've stuck to that figure of 11.11. Does it meet the infra needs that India is about, is expected? Uh, uh, when we look at a Vixit Bharat, do you think this meets the needs of that? See, the budget is for the financial year 24-25. Interim budget and the main budget have to be seen as one document. Because of the general elections and our constitutional uh, responsibility, the budget uh, presented as interim is basically a vote and account. We have to see the two things in one go. Mm -hmm. 11 lakh, 11,000 crore rupees of capital investment is unheard of in the Congress period. Mm -hmm. Congress days, it used to be just about two and a half lakh crore, two lakh seventy-five thousand crore. 
Prime Minister Modi ji has significantly increased it over the years and brought it to a level where where most of our capital investment needs will be met by this investment and today the honorable finance minister has said in her speech that this kind of investment level will continue so one aspect i just wanted to get your thoughts on is that we've seen in the last couple of years pli uh, if we look at it, pli in context of the mobile industry spectacular success now there's a new initiative called eli the government is looking to promote uh, employment what impact do you see we understand it's a 2 lakh crore allocation we're talking big numbers how do you see eli panning out in the next few months eli is based on our experience during the covid where employment linked incentive scheme was launched for 3 years it worked very well for 3 years that helped the people who were looking for jobs and the industry which was trying to uh, which wanted to employ more people but because of the uncertainties of covid they were facing challenges which was addressed by the eli scheme mm -hmm. and in today's budget that has been uh, launched once again in a big way and there is another component which is internship mm -hmm. in our bjp's manifesto these two programs were part of our manifesto and we have uh, basically built upon the experience that has been gained over last 10 years through the skill india program which also had internship and working with the industry as a component of it and eli which was called as atmanirbhar uh, scheme during the covid 3 years of covid period so we have built upon that and launched this scheme these are five schemes as a part of this uh, package and this will not this will be a big uh, employment generation uh, scheme as well as this will help the industry because there will be a match between what the industry requires mm. and what the uh, what the society can do so and uh, i'm sure you would have heard uh, uh, lnt ceo's uh, statement where i think he said that they need about 45000 mm. more people so this kind of scheme will help uh, provide employment to the youth as well as it will meet the requirements of the of the industry if i can just ask one follow up question sir the economic survey said that going forward for the next 5 years we need to create 78 lakhs uh, jobs every year you think eli uh, can help us achieve that target Yes, it will definitely help. And even if you look at last year's job creation data, the net formal jobs which were created, they were of the order of about a lakh, sorry, about a crore and 40, 000, 40 lakh. 1.4 uh, crore jobs were created in the formal sector. If you look at the PFO hmm. data where new, uh, new joinees minus the people who left plus the people who rejoined, mm -hmm. if you make the net of this, mm -hmm then that is about a crore and 40 lakh. So this will certainly help that goal of creating large number of jobs. I think this